LeashTime offers automatic ongoing service schedules for use with customers who need the same services week after week. Rather than requiring you to set up the same schedule for a client every week or every two weeks or every month, LeashTime's ongoing schedule lets you define the schedule once and then keeps creating visits to fulfill that schedule perpetually or until you tell it to stop. LeashTime actually offers two kinds of ongoing schedule. The ongoing per visit schedule sets up normal visits and the client is billed for each completed visit. In the fixed price monthly schedule, however, a single fixed price is set for the month regardless of the number of visits in the month, so that the client knows exactly what she will owe every month. This video covers only the ongoing per visit schedule. The fixed price monthly schedule will be discussed elsewhere. To set up an ongoing schedule for a client, we need to go to the client's profile. Let's look at our customer, Selena Kronk, by typing part of her name in the search box. We are taken to the Services tab of her client profile, where we find a section called Ongoing Schedule. Here we can click on the New Ongoing Per Visit Schedule button to open the Schedule Editor. We begin by supplying the start date, the first date on which we want visits to be scheduled. The quickest way to enter a date is to click on the calendar icon and then choose a date. Today's date appears in red and we can quickly choose a different month if necessary. To pick the date, simply click on it with the mouse. The prepaid box flags the visits in this schedule as visits which should be paid for before they are performed. Next, choose the sitter who will perform most or all of the visits in this schedule. If you do not yet know which sitter this will be, you do not need to choose now. When setting up a schedule, it is often handy to review the notes associated with the client. We can do so very conveniently by clicking on the View All Notes button. This brings up a light box with recent communication to and from the client, notes on the client's account including private office notes, and notes about each pet. For each of the communication entries, you can click on the subject to review the message. To describe the visit schedule, we define a set of services to be repeated every week. For each service, we indicate the days of the week on which it is to be performed. We click on the Days of the Week entry for the service, and we can choose the individual days. Choose All and Clear All can make this step a little faster. If we choose Monday through Friday, Leash Time substitutes the label Weekdays. It also uses the labels Weekends and Everyday as appropriate. Next, we set the time of day for the visit. Clicking on the box opens the time of day dialog. We could set a custom start and end time here, but it's much quicker to pick one of the standard time windows, which you can set up elsewhere in leash time. Then we pick the service. As soon as we do, the client charge and sitter pay rate for the service are immediately calculated. The charge may change depending on the number of pets selected, and the rate may change based on the sitter selected. If you do not see these fields when you first open the editor, just click on the blue dollar sign to display them. You can also click the blue dollar sign to hide them. Andy is pre-selected as the sitter, but we could pick another sitter if we liked. We can leave the pets field as it is in this case, or we can name one or more of Selena's dogs to be walked. If you need to, you can adjust the calculated client charge and sitter rate by entering dollar amounts here and here. For example, Andy might need to drive a long way to walk Selena's dog, so we might charge the client an extra $3 and give Andy an extra $2. When we do, we are offered a chance to note why we are doing so. Later, we can view this note by clicking here. As we build up Selena's schedule, the total weekly charge to the client and the total pay due to the sitters are both shown below the list of services. Let's say that in addition to the daily afternoon walk, Selena's dogs need an evening walk on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We would simply click Add Another Service and repeat the process. This time we choose Tuesday and Thursday, Evening, and Dog Walk. But since Andy is unavailable in the evening, we choose Beth. Beth lives a bit closer to Selena, so we make no adjustments. But we note that the rate is $15 instead of $14. This reflects a custom rate that Beth is set to be paid for dog walks. 
If there are any special notes about the schedule, we can make them by clicking the Notes button and entering them. Before we save our new schedule, we can check it for accuracy by clicking the Preview Visits button. This opens a day calendar view of the schedule, showing the appointments that will be created immediately after we save the schedule. Here we see Andy's afternoon walks and Beth's evening walks on Tuesdays and Thursdays. If the preview looks good, we can go ahead and save the new schedule. The Visits section of the Services tab now shows the visits that were created for Selena's ongoing schedule. LeashTime will continue creating visits for this schedule indefinitely, but at first it creates visits for up to 60 days or whatever interval you have specified for the ongoing schedule look-ahead period preference. Then each day it creates visits as necessary to fill the schedule that many days ahead. We'll cover the ongoing schedule look-ahead period preference at the end of this video. If we need to make changes to the ongoing schedule, we scroll down to the ongoing schedule section and click the Edit Schedule button. The ongoing schedule section now shows a description of the schedule. By the way, you can save yourself some scrolling in the Services tab by clicking on the section header bars. For example, we can hide the Visits section by clicking on the Visits header bar. Clicking the bar again shows you the Visits section. It's quicker than scrolling and reduces the amount of information you have to look at. These labels remind you of what will happen when you click on the bars. When we edit the ongoing schedule, we see the same editor as before with a few additions. The Changes Effective Date, which defaults to today, lets you decide when the changes you make here will take effect. For example, if we wanted to add a morning visit on every weekday, starting next Monday, but not before, then we could choose next Monday on the calendar here. Changing the primary sitter changes the sitter on all of the services shown below. We can give all of the visits to Andy by choosing him. We can, of course, also add or remove services to this schedule and edit the schedule notes. If the client does not need service for a period of time, you can specify that period here, and any visits on those days will be canceled when you save the schedule. For example, we could suspend visits starting November 1st and have them resume on the 5th. If the client decides to cancel the schedule altogether, we can just enter the first day without any visits here. Let's save the changes and review their effects. First, we see that visits falling in the suspension period from November 1st through the 4th are colored pink, indicating that they have been canceled. And we see that the last visit is on November 10th, because we canceled the schedule as of November 11th. The schedule's cancellation status is shown in the description of the schedule. If we want to reverse the cancellation of the schedule, we can edit the schedule again. A note reminds you of the cancellation status of the schedule, and an Uncancel button lets you change it. Leash Time reminds you that the schedule is not really uncancelled until you save the schedule. We can save it by clicking the OK button, and we are returned to the Services tab where we see lots of visits ready to be performed. Setting the number of future days that Leash Time creates visits for is easy. We click on the Preferences item in the Admin pull-down menu to open the Business Preferences window. Then we click on the General Business section bar to open it up and we find the ongoing schedule look ahead period preference. Clicking on the link opens an editor where we can specify a look ahead period. Leash Time recommends an interval of 60 days for the look ahead period. Thanks for using Leash Time.